Ah, I guess I'll do a response video to the Quint K -K 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 guy. Uh, anyway, it's going to be a long video, probably. I'll just play his segments. So, in the first part of this video, I'm critiquing somebody else's video. The Jonestown came up thing, and I pointed out that Jonestown really wasn't about suicide. It was about, yeah, having a some sort of safety net. That was their way out in case everything went wrong. And everything went wrong, and so they used it. But they didn't, like, intend to, to commit suicide. It wasn't the end game they were playing. The game they were playing was basically about um, economic freedom and such. And they were basically using religion. You know, I think it was mostly just a tax dodge and such. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, leave us play his critique. No, Jonestown didn't start as a death cult. Uh, Jonestown, when it started, was a uh, religious movement. And it was also a civil movement. And, uh, yeah, so why bother with this, right? So why don't you just say, okay, I agree with you, Gary. Uh, his use of Jonestown as a suicide cult was probably a bad argument. That that would have been the rational thing for you to do. Because you're basically agreeing with me. So, lame on you. Really. Petty bullshit. Yeah, let's see what he says here. And the dumb Christian fucks uh, calling them such is not bigoted. That's not a bigoted statement. Right. So he thinks it's bigotry if you um, judge something based on its primary function, like something directly related to function. Like if you say religion is ignorant, it makes you stupid. That's a bigotry. That's not a fundamental fact, or it can't be stated as a fact. Um, you don't even understand the concept of bigotry. Bigotry is, is fake associations. It's like you being bigoted against long hair or something. You know, and saying that this is somehow an important feature of somebody's character or argument. I'm making false associations. Like I should say, everybody who has a Q in their name is an asshole because one asshole with a Q in his name is an asshole. That would be a bigotry, something that's kind of irrelevant, totally irrelevant. And I'm going to make a judgment based on it. That's bigotry. Okay? It has nothing to do with the actual character of the thing. You're blaming something that is extraneous, irrelevant, not, not causal, not functional, not um, meaningful. Um, that's bigotry, stupid, dumb, idiot, fucking jerk. <laughs> you know, those are all things you are. Okay? It's not a bigotry. You can use those words. Alright, that's enough. Until next time. Other yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever seen you badmouth or insult anyone on the internet. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so, so here's the point I was making. This guy makes a video on a subject for which he never watched the original videos on the subject. He concedes that his video was wrong in the sense that he concedes he did no research and he has no right to publish a video, so he took the video down. So he's basically conceded the argument that his argument was superficial, thin, unresearched, and deserved no merit or credibility or viewership or anything else, and that's why he's taken it down. <laughs> and, um, you know, you're going to sit there and... and um, uh, say that every critique I've made where I've insulted people, I haven't insulted them for good reason, that I didn't research or watch their videos first. Well, at least I did do that much. So if somebody's going to say that I'm Jim Jones, well, then let them prove it. Let them watch one of my videos first and then call me Jim Jones. But to say that I'm Jim Jones without even watching the damn videos, you've got to concede is bullshit, asshole. Man, are you really... People do not reproduce at a rate sufficient to maintain human existence. That's a... No, that's false. Uh, you should check your facts. And you should shut the fuck up until you get some real facts. And you review the data. That's not true. Okay, so he's arguing now that when I state <clears throat> that um, in human reproduction worldwide, the uh, fact is that most couples produce less than 2.47 children, whatever the number is for a sustaining population. 
So um, that's the truth. And then when you combine the number of single people who never marry or couples who never have children, you get to numbers like 80, 85 percent of the human population is not reproducing at a rate sufficient to maintain human existence. There will be declining human existence if they were re totally responsible for human procreation. The number of human beings would be in decline. That's the truth. It will be verified by the United Nations and all these other people. They're even conceding that when human population reaches 9 million um, in 25 years or whatever, that um, there's going to be this civilization effect that's going to that's going to take over and human population will start to decline now do you really think that would be possible if the majority of people were still reproducing at a rate higher than um, no population growth so again you are fail okay you've accused me of saying something that's not true that's not factual and yet you're going to produce no evidence demonstrating how it's wrong it's the truth, it's accurate, um, you're wrong, I'm right. I'm even using a number lower than is the truth. The true number might be that 95% of human beings, the top 95, that the 95% who are the least reproductive, okay, so if you take the least reproductive 95% of the human population, okay, <laughs> and all you have is the other little 5% that's the most reproductive, the truth is, if you if you eliminated that five percent from the population, there would be declining human population. Prove me wrong. The uh, top one percent is producing less. Top one percent. No one's even talking about the top one percent. And the fact is that the top <laughs> all humans are producing less. You idiot. There's almost no population on Earth who has or is producing more babies than they were producing 200 years ago. Because we have what's called birth control, moron. Jeez, man, you are dumb. And we also have less infant mortality, which certainly people don't have to have as many kids because they don't die as often. Than they have in past years, past generations. The uh, bottom end of the spectrum, the uh, poverty-ridden people, the economic, uh, the people who live in a religious system, a, a uh, uh, theocracy, uh, they actually produce more than they have in the past. You have to check your facts. Well, again, my, there's nothing wrong with my facts. You're absolutely 100% wrong, and I'm absolutely 100% correct you're a liar and a slanderer essentially yeah there's just no you have no there's no merit to this you made no you can't sit there and say somebody's wrong and, and demonstrate with nothing all right i've made my claims i've staked my reputation on them if you have a counterclaim then make it but make it with an you have to prove it shithead that's the way it works in reality you can't just say no uh-uh you have to do a little better than that Really? That's not a fact. It's not a fact just because you say it. And you should get out of the house more often, maybe go to the library and check that out. Yeah, well, excuse me, but haven't you heard of the internet, shithead? Yeah, you don't need libraries anymore, moron. Get with the program. Out or maybe spend some time away from your antinatalist bullshit to actually read something. We're actually arguing ethylism right now, so... You haven't even got that right. Scientific or uh, talk to some uh, scientists and uh, some people who may be... Yeah, people on your list, right? Yeah, well, sorry. No, thank you. ...able to provide you with some real facts. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, the real fact that, uh, you know, there's something else than a small percentage of the human race who is responsible for all the excess population growth. Yeah, I don't think you're going to find such a scientist. Nope, I don't think so. Yeah, the other 80% don't behave that way. You're wrong. So there's, he said three times now. So he's saying that the top 80%, the 80% the, the of the human race who's having the least children, so that means the entire Japanese population, the entire 
domestic United States population, that is the people who arrived in America sometime before the last 20 years, um, the entire Russian population, most of Europe, that all these populations, okay, he's claiming, okay, are, don't have um, um, zero population, haven't achieved zero population growth. Sorry, I mean, those are just facts, asshole. You're an asshole. Really, big fat asshole. So now you're stealing derived energy shtick. Thought experiments, really? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know. So that's another accusation. So you got proof that I've stolen the shtick of thought experiments? And that somehow my videos haven't had thought experiments in them um, five years ago or six years ago? Gee, uh, prove it. If you're going to make accusations, you ought to really show up with some sort of evidence. You're going to make accusations um, insulting somebody's character. I mean, gee, you're just such a lame asshole. Oh, there, I'm insulting your character. Yeah, but there's the evidence right there. You're making false accusations about people. Yeah, so that, there you go. That's my proof. Ugh, you just suck. That's all you did. You did. All right, you're going to get it. You're going to slowly deteriorate eventually. Yeah, getting to the point, uh, how much money have you uh, contributed to ALS? Uh, so this is how he gets to the point. I'm making the argument that if there was, you know, a thought experiment about it, the fact that it's, if, if life, um, if I just change the standard, change the, the generic function of the living organism, it, what, at what point do you say no moss? No, that's just too ugly. Like if, if all kids had to be born with AIDS or born and they all got ALS, would life be too ugly, too dark for you to say, yeah, that's a good idea, let's have more of those? Um, I'm, would you be willing to impose it, to have children that would have ALS? Um, so yeah, that, so that thought experiment initiates some counter-argument, some sort of, I'm obligated now that I've mentioned ALS, that I'm somehow, now it's my obligation to explain how I'm trying to cure ALS, that I've done some sort of work in ALS. So you can't bring up the homeless, you can't bring up landmines and wars, you can't bring up any kind of activity that takes place in, in, in society anywhere unless you can somehow prove that you've done something about it, that you've contributed to it. So you can't complain about landmines in other in uh, in other countries, or, or in Vietnam even. You know you can't complain that we did that unless you have spent money to get them dug out of the ground. Sorry, this is stupid. Uh, how much money have you contributed to Muscular Dystrophy Association? Have you ever worked for them, or uh, went down to their centers, or uh, thrown any uh, internet? Uh, fundraiser. You know, I don't do any of that stuff. I'm I'm not the one who's imposing any of that stuff. That's my whole argument. I'm not willing to take the risk of creating those diseases. That's my cure. Don't create them. Don't create the opportunity for them. You're the one claiming that the risk is worth it. That the nuclear mess that you can make, that Chernobyl's and the Fukushima's and the rest of them are worth it. Okay, these this potential catastrophe <laughs> that you're asking for. Um, that somehow it's worth the price you're paying and uh, I'm claiming it's not worth it. It seems to me the person who's claiming it's worth it is the one who has to account for how they're cleaning it up, how, the, how they're going to take care of it, how they're going to pay the bill for it, how they're going to pay back the people ruined by it. You're the one that, that owes the explanation. I don't. I'm not the one justify taking the risk. You really are just too stupid for this conversation. Just for them. Um, have you done anything to alleviate suffering on a grand scale, not on your own personal? Yeah, well, again, I'm not going to do I have no obligation to explain my life history, but yes, I've done lots of little things for little people. Um, but that's irrelevant. Uh, the only thing that's relevant is, is I'm arguing that the simplest way to cure all these diseases is not to expose yourself to them in the first place. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't bother taking the chance. You don't gonna lose anything. Don't have babies. Uh, scale. Not on your own personal loss. Have you done anything to actually uh, end ALS or MDA or, or uh, muscular dystrophy? Any of that stuff? 
Right. So anybody who advocates for any position, they have to do something. Apparently, somehow they have to. What if you're if you're against the Republican Party, you have to what? Pay the Kaiser some money. I don't know what, what exactly you have to do. What, what's the alternative? What's the fight you have to fight to, to be an approved critiquer? I mean, this is just silly. Uh, anyway, no, next bit. That's beside the point, anyway, because the point that you're trying to make is that everyone dies and. Ev well, okay. So he's going to tell me what my point is, right? So I'm making a simple argument that life's too expensive. And that if people looked at it honestly, they'd acknowledge that truth, and they can see that truth, and that there are standards by which they would judge it too expensive. Um, and uh, but no, he's going to tell me what I believe. <laughs> yeah, so whatever. Um, I think it, it doesn't. I, it just doesn't need to be done. I don't need to sit there and explain how your critiques or your your um, your trivializations of my philosophy are not my philosophy. Everyone suffers. So you shouldn't even be making that argument, the argument for ALS or... Whatever. I, I haven't made the argument that everyone suffers, that's why life's no good. I've made the argument that people suffer without consent, that, that, that it's an unconsensual risk that people are exposed to. So I'm not going to re-articulate how I've made the argument, but again, your claims are totally irrelevant to um, the character of my argument. So they're just more slander. That's all you are. You're just a liar. <clears throat> you think that's an honest description of my philosophy? Well, I think you know it's a dishonest one. So you're just a you're just a liar. So no, there's no other word for it. Or what if you had this? What if you had that? Uh, your logic is that everyone's going to suffer and everyone's going to die. Well, again, so prove it. Prove that that's my philosophy, and there's nothing, I'm not saying anything else. I'm not making any statement about the basic structure of the DNA molecule replication, evolution, all that context. Go ahead and prove that I'm not making a bigger argument than that. I don't think you'll do that, because, yeah, it's not your intent, to be honest. Hello. Hey, Jim. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'll take a look at it. Um, you know, it might be your, the batteries in your thermostat, but I'll take a look. Somebody's safe. The fact that you can produce sperm doesn't give you a right to create human beings. Well, that's what you're saying. Well, that's what you're saying. Well, that's what you're saying. Who are you to decide who has a right to do anything? First of all... Yeah, well, whatever. I'm not deciding. I'm making an argument. Um... You know, I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to make an argument that here's the constituents of what makes something matter in the world. And so I'm claiming that something matters, and because it matters, there's a, a consequence, a logical consequence to have it having significance. And that the character of its significance is that it possesses these things called rights that we recognize, that we discover them, we reveal them, we uncover them, we see them. We don't make them up. We define them as being real. Um, yeah, so I'm making a claim that people have rights. <sighs> Jeez. In nature, there are no rights. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm not making the argument from nature. You are. So that's your problem. <laughs> yeah, really, it's just your problem. Um, things with a brain can figure out that uh, there's a consequential difference between sticks and stones, that things are different, and we can identify the difference, and differences mean that you have to treat things differently. That's what logic demands, logic does. That's part of the universe, by the way. Uh, other than brute force, attack, uh, tactical advantages, um, 
there are no intrinsic rights in the universe. Again, so you, you say so. Um, there's no cop in the universe. The fact that there's no law or rights, that's a separate argument. I'm arguing that they are there. They're there to be discovered. We discover them. Um, we reveal them. We, uh, we find the truth. Um, in in um, through the process of, of of revealing the function of the mechanism, and we make declarations about the mechanism, and we say this part does this, and this part does that, and this part does that, and because this part has a quality, we say because of that quality, it now is different, and this is the the list of ways it will be treated differently because of that difference. These, these differences matter. Um, you can say that there's no such thing as a right, which is the same thing as saying that it doesn't matter whether somebody molests a child or something. Of course it does. You're an imbecile if you can't figure that out. If you can't admit that truth. It's not a subjective truth. It's a fact of, of, um, of, of <sighs> character. It's a fact of context. It's a fact of um, substance. It's a fact. It's a, it's a consequential fact. And the consequence of sentience is that it has a welfare, and the consequence of a welfare means it needs care, it needs consideration. It needs to be respected. That's illogical and it's stupid. It's stupid to use that as an example in your argument as a tool in your argument. Says you. Like I said, yes. <laughs> Says you. There's nothing else to say to that. It doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. There's nothing wrong with articulating and arguing in defense of rights. It's just stupid. There's nothing more important, I don't think, for a human being to, to involve themselves in arguments, except for arguments about rights and responsibilities. It's the most important subject in the universe the rights and responsibilities that are a consequence of the character of human consciousness. Yeah, there's no more important subject than that. Idiot. Now, uh, just because you can make a fist and throw it into somebody's face, okay, doesn't give you a right to do so. Uh, in nature, you have that right. <laughs> yeah, no, you have a freedom, you have a liberty. Okay, rights and liberties are two different things, aren't they? Can, you know, can, can't we argue that having the ability to do something is different than having the right to do them? So again, you're just ignoring the subject. The subject is about rights and, res and the reciprocal, which is responsibilities, right? So we're really talking, whenever we're talking about rights, we're talking about responsibilities. And we have a responsibility to sentience, to respect its character and its consequential function. You also have the right to get knocked on your ass. Um, now in society, if you do that in society, which is part of life, part of uh, humankind, and that's one... Yeah, well we're arguing about what the structure of society should be, what the memes and norms and ethics and rules and laws of society should be. So you, you can't argue what society is in an argument about what society should be. That's stupid. The argument from what is is irrelevant when you're arguing about what should be. So again, <laughs> fuck you, you're an idiot. One of the things you want to get rid of, that you want, you want the human race to go extinct. In a society, you have rights. But in your belief system, there are no rights. Uh, there are no societal rights. Oh, again, I'm not going to argue. It's not about societal rights. It's about the truth of the circumstance, which is logically consistent with what you've declared to be the premises. Um, the, my premise is, is that suffering matters, that the welfare of sentient beings matters. Um, if you can't agree with that premise, then we have nothing to talk about, absolutely nothing. There's no, there's no foundation for which to build any communication whatsoever. If you think that's just something made up, then we have nothing to talk about. We really don't.
because you want to end everything and you want to have it your way uh, well of course that's right I see a logical vision of right and wrong and I want right to happen not wrong to happen duh and so I'm going to advocate and argue um, in defense of what I think is the right thing to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, shit for brains. You don't care about the supposed rights of anyone else but yourself. Well, that's just stupid. It's a stupid way to phrase the argument. I care about the rights of all the individuals who will be um, obliged to pay the price for other people's imposition of their... Um, whatever they're claiming. They're, they're claiming a right to impose life on other beings, to subject them to risk. I'm saying they have no such right. They can't defend their action with any kind of logic. They're the ones acting out of selfishness. I've made these arguments. I don't think you can unravel those arguments. That is an act of selfishness that provokes and compels them to impose life. It is not an act of reason. It's not an act of disciplined understanding of some necessity that needs to be accomplished, some purpose or function beyond their own satisfaction. Anyone else but anyone who has your view on life and your opinions of what reality is and your opinions of what life is, you don't... Mm, yeah, whatever. Opinions are in fact, it doesn't matter. You're arguing through the statement of here's a theory, here's an opinion. Uh, uh, you know, hypothesis. And uh, you can either make a counter argument to it or you can slander the individual making it. And you choose in to, chosen to um, ignore the arguments being made and just keep arguing with the messenger, keep insulting the messenger. You're an, <laughs> you're an asshole. Care what pronatalists think about life. Uh, you don't care about their rights. Uh, yeah, of course I don't care about the right of somebody who claims the right to own slaves. I don't care about the claimed rights of the people who want to torture animals or support bullfighting or any other subject for which you are on one side and they are on the other side and you are arguing they are doing something wrong. Duh. I mean, this is, um, <laughs> this is the dilemma of the human condition is that there are seven billion of us and that we will act as a kind and we as individuals will argue for what humans should represent, how humans should behave, what is right and wrong conduct for the human race. These are arguments rational human beings with intelligences have. Shit for brains. That's what they do. That's the right thing for human beings to do is to argue those positions. The wrong thing for them to do is to slander people for having the argument and slander them for giving a shit about something. Um, that just makes you a petty little fucking turd. <laughs> yeah. So who are you to talk about rights? Oh, right. You're just saying, who am I to talk about anything? Who am I? I'm, a, I'm an informed and intelligent human being willing to put my ideas on a table and challenge somebody to make legitimate counter-arguments. Your legitimate counter arguments is buffoonery and um, you know trivial um, word games. Yeah, fuck you. I don't think you're the best example to discuss rights. Yeah, I don't think you're the anything to do anything. I don't think you <laughs> your function is anything. I don't think you serve any useful purpose whatsoever. None. Your critiques are shallow and unintelligent. Um, you make no contribution to conversation or dialogue. You're just useless. Yeah, pretty much. Until well, next time. And there's the problem. Um, life is difficult. I think... Uh, Life is difficult. So I, I'm just claiming that life isn't that complicated, okay? We can know our origins, we know the function of our psychology, and we know why it exists, why we, we do certain things. These things can all be explained. It's not outside of our reach anymore. There's no mystery fog that needs to be resolved anymore. Um, 
This is something material matter can do under the right circumstances. Whether or not it's a good thing for material matter to be doing is what we're arguing about. But in my opinion, the answer is pretty simple. Um, it's just a waste. That's all it is. A pronatalist and antinatalist can agree that life is difficult. Again, I, I, I wasn't saying life was difficult. I was saying that the, the um, question of, of what we are and how we function is not difficult anymore. It's not a hard question to answer anymore. I can agree on that one issue. Um, and because life is difficult, there are no easy answers to everything. Where? Where's that written? Who, what God wrote that on what rock? Because that just doesn't say anything. There's no proof that things can't have an easy answer. Solutions can be incredibly simple. Oh, we have a huge deficit. What's the solution? Well, you either tax more or you spend less. Yeah, there's no really simple solutions. Duh. And uh, that goes back to uh, suicide. Uh, people often think that suicide is an easy answer to a life of suffering. Now, I don't think that's an easy answer, but it is an action that um, that goes along. It's a solution to a problem already created, but it doesn't prevent problems, does it? I mean, it prevents the individual's future, but it doesn't prevent my creation, does it? No. Okay, I mean, if somebody committed suicide, um, the only people that would matter to commit suicide would be my prospective parents, all right? I mean, that's the only way uh, suicide is going to help somebody who's being imposed upon. So, again, it doesn't solve the prevention problem. Along with the belief that one is suffering and that life has nothing to offer but suffering. Uh, but I uh, doubt you... Well, whatever. You, you keep saying nothing to offer but suffering. Again, these aren't my statements. My statement is that life is insufficiently efficient. That's a term I've used. In, 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 insufficiently efficient. That's all. It's not an engine running efficiently enough. It's consuming too much gas for per, the too little production. So no matter what you call the production, you know, little golden fish crackers, um... We know what the consumption is in our life, okay? Or the consumption is this experiences, experience, negative experiences. The production is these things we call these positive experiences. The argument is simply is that the, the weight, the value of the negative experiences is too, too, much, too much value for too little production, which are these positive experiences that are often made out of rather crass and, and superficial satisfactions and gratifications. And your other antinatalists uh, who say that life is just suffering. Oh, again, you keep saying what we're saying, and that's not what we're saying, okay? You keep doing that. That's your slander. Again, how many times you, you don't, you're not quoting my videos where I say life is just suffering. That's not a direct quote, so it's just a lie. So, yeah, you just lie about the other people's position. And that's, that's how you win an argument. That's how you call, that's what you call ownage. It's just to lie. So you're just a liar. Uh, when you continue to live, when you continue to breathe, when you try so hard to stay alive, to serve. Well, again, I, these arguments aren't complicated. I've made them over and over again. Um, you know, there's there's no accomplishment in killing yourself. You're not going to solve the problem. You're not going to cure cancer by dying of cancer. You know, you're going to have to be around to do something about something. You got to fight to change things, and it's change we're fighting for, not for ourselves personally, but for the future victims. Again, the reason why I exist is because nobody fought the battle to stop my existence. Right? Duh. Not complicated, right? survive and to get your message out there. Um, that to me seems like a survival instinct which uh
Yeah, Antilaeus, like in Mendham, have a remarkable survival instinct. Again, it, it's, th these are your slanders. Um, there's, there's no survival instinct in the first place. There's a comfort instinct. Okay, I mean, there's just the basic mechanism that says it's nice to feel nice and it sucks to feel sucky. It's not any more complicated than that. Okay, uh, you go for the carrots and you avoid the stick. Um, death, dying, generally speaking, is kind of sticky. Okay, it's kind of like a stick. It's not. It's not going. It's not going to necessarily. There's nothing cupcakey fun in its appearance. All right, it's an ugly cover of a book, um, at minimum. And the more you look at it, the more you see that yeah, this not. It, this isn't exactly what you call a good time. And so yeah, people try to put that one off. They try to evade it or avoid it as long as possible, um, because yeah, they just don't want to have to deal with it. Because it's not going to be fun, idiot. Not complicated. But you don't call that an instinct, okay? The, 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 the fact that we um, run from harm and run towards things that satisfy our desires is really kind of silly to call that instinct. That's kind of just, duh. But correct me if I'm wrong, but you're against that. Yeah, well, I have corrected you. Um, and you are wrong in your paraphrase. You're wrong in how you've premise the argument because you've slandered the people making the argument. So yeah, that's where you're wrong. Again, you have no right to tell him not to play it. All right. So you didn't play the rest of the clip, but I was just saying just like nuclear power or like drunk driving or like the other million other things we give example of where you're imposing risk on somebody else, that you don't have a right to impose risk. And somebody's allowed to say that. You don't have a right to do that. Um, and it's stupid to say you don't have a right to articulate that somebody else doesn't have a right. We have a right to argue about what our rights are, asshole. That's one of our fundamental rights, is the right to speak about what we think rights should be. <laughs> you're such a fucking idiot. And, and there's a point where we have a right to, you know, go to war about it, do a lot of things. We have a right to fight for what we think is right. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fight for what I think is right. Now we can all impose standards on other people and That's what you do, is you impose standards on other people. <laughs> this, is, this is an argument you're making? I, I impose standards? No, I make arguments for those standards. But yes, the fact is we all impose on each other. We do it every day. We have laws right now that you probably agree with that impose on people. They say that people can't own bazookas. You probably don't want people to own bazookas. You probably don't want a private law that says people are allowed to own weapons of mass destruction. You probably don't think that's a good idea, and you'd probably advocate for laws against it. So don't... don't fucking play this this hypocritical game with these little pop-ins you know four seconds of commentary that's just overt and grotesque duplicity because you apply the same standards on different subjects well because you care about something else because you have a different agenda i'm not allowed to have an agenda that's different than yours that's all you're saying here it's not my tactics it's not what i'm doing that's wrong it's that I don't have your beliefs, that I'm not thinking like you. That's my crime. Well, fuck you. Really, fuck you. Silly person. Do you have a bazooka? Do you have a nuclear bomb? Um, I think society is doing some things right, don't you? Wow, this makes sense to you? So, so you're just basically advocating for the very thing I just argued for, is that certain things we demand fail safe. We demand it from people. We say we're not going to allow you to put us, make us vulnerable. And if somebody else advocates for a different kind of fail safe on a different subject, you're just saying, well, because I don't care about that, the, the, the argumentation is somehow flawed. No, it's not the argument that's wrong, okay? It's just that you don't like it because it's not consistent with your agenda. And that's all. And so somehow you're saying it's, you're, you're attempting to disqualify it, and there's no standard for this disqualification. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is this ultimate duplicity. You can argue and defend um, law, and somebody else can't. I mean, that's all. You're just saying you're, you're, you're entitled 
You're respectable. Everybody else is not if they disagree with you. That's all you're saying. I mean, it's just so bogus. So anyway, fuck you. And such. Come on, hit the button. Because that's ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. Oh, okay. So that's his answer. So his answer to why should you have a right to impose life without a fail-safe guarantee, it's just ridiculous. So, so that's, all, that's the best he can do. So we can force people to constrain other forms of imposition, um, violence against the peace, so to speak. But this one, it's just ridiculous on its face. There's no argument that needs to be made. They don't have to explain why life giving, creating human beings, doing biological experiments. Somehow, we're not allowed to judge that behavior. <laughs> yeah, why? Because God said so. You might as well just say those words. But you don't have anything else. You have nothing else to defend why procreation is off the judgment table. It's just as ju judgeable as any other act. Okay? There's, it's like saying, what, should we take pedophilia off the table? Because it has a natural component, because it's a natural penis that does the violating, it's somehow okay? No, afraid not. All right, I guess I'll just make this the first video, um, because I can't fit anything else in the camera. Um, and there's like four million little pieces in here. So anyway, and then we'll do a part two maybe or whatever. I don't know. We'll see how things go. This isn't much of an argument to argue with, and I can't really imagine going through another three videos worth of this. Oh. sound like a good idea no more cliche than life sucks or life is suffering or we're all shit all cliches um whatever so you want to play a semantics game now um the argument i was making is that he has these superficial traditional notions like just saying life is a journey not a destination or some sort of cloud crap or some sort of silver lining, you know. Every cloud has a silver lining. These are just little triteisms. Um, and unless you're going to defend them, you know, by showing evidence of how there is some sort of actual fact that there are silver linings and that things work out, everything works out okay. Run, Forrest, run. Um, that somehow it all works out. Uh, then it's just bullshit. It's just taking something that's been around for a long time. It's traditionally loved and people it clings to to society for no merit. Okay, so it's almost like the bigotry argument in reverse, in that it's given credibility because it's merely been around a long time. It's like paying old teachers more money. Okay, it's stupid. They don't do more work. They're not more functional. You're just paying them because they've been around. Um, and so there's a lot of people just spouting old, dead philosophy and trite little cliche bits. And they don't bother to defend their philosophy. And quite obviously, I spend a lot of time defending what I say. So even if I use cliches as titles, I defend the cliche. Big difference. Again, a cliche. Life is just a replicating molecule. Life is not just a replicating molecule. Uh, you are proof of that. Your discussion is proof of that. All right, we're going to just argue now stuff that's so distant from anything I'm actually saying, okay? I, I'm saying that a car is just a car, okay? The basic idea is the car is a means of transportation. That's its basic function. I'm not saying a car can't be an entertainment center. I'm not saying a car can't be a place to get laid. I'm saying its basic function is this, and the bottom line is, is that's what it's going to be. It's not something else. You're better off putting the entertainment center someplace else in the end. Um, because it's a car. Um, that's its function. Um, but anyway, like again, I, I, I make the arguments. I defend what I say. So it's just stupid to play some little game here, like somehow... I, I have, I'm disproving my own argument by making an argument. Well, of course I'm not. <laughs> yeah, the argument has the, the substance in it. And again, you want to react to every word. We well, can go ahead and do that, but I'm going to call bullshit on that. You can only react on single sentences when nobody provides any argument beyond that. I provide plenty of argument beyond that. So you're just, again, just game playing. Bravo. You, you, you know, 
you're you're a silly little uh, game player um, philosophically. You can't play at the big boy sport. Um, you know, and you're claiming you're owning me, owning in Mendham. You know, you you couldn't rent me. You know, with with uh, all the money you've collected in nickels from Grandma for rubbing her naked belly, <laughs> you can rent me for an hour, not even a half hour. Silly person, especially with lame crap like this. Let's wear a wig and, you know, we'll we'll say shit about it every sentence. Yeah, sorry, fail. The fact that you can argue and other people can argue with you is proof that life is not just a replicating molecule. To say it's a replicating molecule is disingenuous and stupid. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry. No, it's its fundamental function. is why life exists. It's because a molecule replicated moron. That's its origin. It's the mechanism that guided its, uh, cre its, its shaping through evolution. That's how it's shaped through evolution, is through the process of replication. So this function is a key component of what the product becomes. And that's the argument being made. To say that it's um, um, somebody saying that there's nothing else but replication would be impossible anyway. They're just saying the function is transportation. The function is replication. It's that kind of analogy. But go ahead, play your game. All right, this part, uh, there, I've just pointed out that I've gone the Ephelis channel, link below, I guess. Um, you know, there's the, the, the six videos I've made are basically just explaining the same content on different days in different ways. And um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, I think that's a perfectly reasonable way to um, attempt to um, describe um, theory. Any one of five million of your videos? Uh, how much shit do you have on the internet? saying the same thing over and over and over yeah okay so this argument always comes up that I've said all the same shit over and over and over I don't I think I, I could dare you I could defy you to find some other video producer on YouTube who has provided more original ideas uh, more um, that made more effort to promote conversation about original ideas he's had contest idea <laughs> contests um, so, so this is just bogus, okay? I've got channels about virtual reality. I've got channels about graceful exit, the right to die. Um, uh, you know, I got channels about uh, the education system, um, finding you know a better way to to organize that system. I've got plenty on economics. So again, this is you know just just more slander, more ridicule for no purpose. You can't defend your argument here that my content is somehow thin and weak and redundant. Um, yeah, okay, redundant, everybody's going to get accused of that a little bit because we have to keep fighting the dumb Christians. <laughs> We've been doing it for hundreds of years, and we're going to have to do it for a few more, it seems. So whose fault is that? Is that my fault that you're all too stupid to get simple arguments? I don't think so. And over. <sighs> oh, just six varieties of the same thing. So people should watch your whatever it is, 2,000 videos, 5,000 videos, four, six variations on the same theme. It's a separate channel we're talking about, okay? The guy responded to the other channel I have that's called Ephelist, okay? That's what the conversation's about, and I'm explaining why those videos are the way they are, and that they're not intended to be six videos that somebody has to watch. They're just intended to be six videos explaining it. And if you don't get it because of one video, then try watching another video, and maybe you'll get it then. But it's, it's there's nothing... What's, what, what are the, what's the crime you're accusing me of? To being a little bit innovative in how I produce video content? Oh my, what a horror horror. There's no commentary about the rest of the videos I've made on YouTube. And again, they speak for themselves, and I'm not going to sit there and... I'm not going to defend every one of them, but based on comparison to what? Comparison to who is this content worthy of your ridicule? Shit for brains. Compared to your crap? At least I'm not doing this shit. Um, I don't think so. Uh, that's why you're starting to lose your viewers. 
Well, compare it to somebody else, okay? Show me somebody else who's not a partner channel, doesn't have ads on the videos, whose view numbers, who has more than a thousand subscribers, and who has who has gained subscribers and great gained view numbers. Go show me those individuals. All right. I mean, we're fighting a system here. The system doesn't like us, and the system isn't going to sit there and 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 uh, do much to promote this content. And that's a that's a liability we're all facing. Shit for brains. And why you are becoming more irrelevant with each video? Yeah. Well, then why are you responding to me if I'm so irrelevant? If I'm becoming more irrelevant, why do you need to make a six-part video? Huh? Why do you need to do that? Hmm. Hmm? No, no answer. Who says it's pretty damn good? I say it's shit. Your videos are shit. You do a shitty job of making your argument. Now, just because you say they're good does not mean they're good. Uh, you cannot give critique on your own videos. <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, I can point out that I think it's I've done okay. I've made a good effort. I can say that. It's my right to say it. So what, whatever. You have your opinion. I think your opinion's unqualified, and I think it's demonstrated how unqualified it is in your own argument, your own silly, imbecilic, superficial, trivial, bigoted, um, ignorant argument. And even if you did, that would be subjective. That's not objective. Well, again, objective, you can qualify any statement, all right? So we can qualify it like, oh, yeah, how are my videos, uh, are my videos have distracting music and jerky, herky, berky images bouncing all over the place? And am I spelling at people? Am I, what, you know, we, we can critique it by a lot of standards about clarity and sincerity. Um, and uh, so, you know, we can qualify the content. And, uh, yeah, okay, maybe it doesn't have huge style um, numbers, but substance, yeah, it wins. Right, and you're trying to make an objective argument for the universe and against the DNA molecule and against suffering. Yeah, and there's something wrong with that? No, I don't think there is. Fail again. Whoa. Whoa. Technical issues. Are the box going to crash again? Maybe. Yeah. How much time do you need in a video to say life sucks? How much time does that take? It's not saying life sucks, it's proving it. It's making arguments. I've made lots of arguments explaining the zero-sum game nature of life. Um, I've used the consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, addiction. I've done lots of work trying to explain how we are gamed by our psychology and that we're still playing a very crude, stupid, ignorant game um, and, and that um, it's a game where the net product is all losses, not victory. And yeah, so I've defended that point of view. So that takes argumentation, that's right. You're fundamentally arguing against what people hold near and dear to their little totem pole heart. You're explaining why all the little totems on the pole are bullshit. That none of the little scary bird faces or hobgoblins or gremlin man, that none of these things ever existed and they don't mean anything. Yeah, it takes a little time to do that. It takes time to undo thousands of years of brainwashing. What? Two seconds? Five seconds? And you want these people to watch your 15-minute videos? <clears throat> Yeah, well, why why should anybody watch any of your videos, right? This is this is the character of the argument. There's no counter argument here, just a, a finger pointing. More of this cliche. You're 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 saying anti stuff. Panic, panic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah, and you're not one of those. I guess that was a small little snarkyism. I called him a shit talking, talk out of your ass -er or something. And yeah. Right. Well, again, I, <laughs> what's, what's the point? So you're going to play videos about critiques of other people's critiques of critiques. And you're not going to play the parts or respond to the parts in any depth that are actually arguing the argument. So this is just sort of a waste of time, isn't it? Yes, it is.